welcome to this refresh of our live migration screencast. The builds of Windows Server 2008 R2 that are approaching release candidate contain enough uh, UI changes and uh, new features to warrant a refresh of the screencast. So I'm going to focus on those uh, um, new features and uh, I'm going to review very quickly the initial steps required to set up a failover cluster. So number one, we have to configure the share storage and for that purpose I've chosen to use the Microsoft iSCSI target and created two volumes on that target. One to be used for quorum of one gigabyte and one to be used as the cluster share volume of 70 gigabytes. Also, both targets must be visible by the nodes in the cluster so I've made sure that the iSCSI initiators that are allowed to see those targets are those of uh, the two nodes I'm going to be using in the cluster, which are the Cray 001 and 002 in this case. So after we've configured the share volume, the next step is to go on the nodes of the cluster, on each node of the cluster, and install the failover cluster feature, which is not installed by default. You install it very simply by clicking on Add Features and select Failover Clustering. It does not require a reboot. You also want to make sure that you have the Hyper-V server role installed, which you can verify by going to the Roles tab and if you don't see Hyper-V here, clicking Add Roles and installing the Hyper-V role through this wizard. So you click Next and you're presented with a list of, uh, of roles, Hyper-V being there. Uh, if you had already installed uh, the uh, 2008 beta that we released uh, and configured a live migration cluster, the follow-up betas will allow you to upgrade. So let's cancel this wizard and uh, carry on with our installation. So we've now got the Hyper-V role, we've now got the um, failover cluster feature. We can go and configure the volumes that uh, we've just prepared on the iSCSI target on the Disk Management tab. And all we're going to do is mount and format those volumes and give them a couple of letters for um, our own ease of understanding. Q for Quorum and Z for the cluster share volume. So that's a very quick revision of the preliminary steps that you need to set up a failover cluster. If you want more details, please see the original screencast on live migration and also uh, the uh, screencast on failover clustering that are available on TechNet Edge. The next step will be to fire up the failover cluster manager and start the failover cluster uh, setup properly. Before we do that, I want to show you very quickly the configuration of each node of this cluster. In particular, I want to show you the number of networks that I am using. I have a domain network, which is connected to uh, the internal uh, Microsoft network. It's a one gigabit interface. And I have two more networks, one that is going to be used for uh, cluster traffic, private cluster traffic, and the other one, which is called application in uh, this case, that is going to be used for iSCSI storage. In reality, you want to make sure that you have at least two network interfaces to separate the iSCSI traffic, the private traffic, from the client access traffic especially if you have virtual machines that, of course, are going to be used by external customers, you want to uh, put them on a network that is not the private cluster network. So it's a good idea to have at least three if you're using iSCSI, and if you're not using iSCSI, at least two anyway. We go ahead and start creating the R2 cluster. We want to validate the configuration that we have. So we start the validation wizard, enter the name of the nodes, the Cray001 with its domain. And then the Cray001 
zero two. Where that's the main. Added it. Click next and run all the tests. These are all the tests that are gonna be run. So we'll check the hosts for any major discrepancies. We'll validate the cluster network, we'll validate the failover and the arbitration of the disks. And if we have any MPIO based device, which we don't have at this point, um, we will also validate multi panning, etc. So I will uh, launch the wizard and pause the recording, I'll spare you uh, a few uh, minutes of your time. So here we go again. The um, test has passed. We can use these two nodes to create a cluster. You can see that all the various tests are listed as green. Everything is fine with this cluster. The network configuration is correct. The storage failover happens and so on. So we just uh, create the cluster using the validated nodes. We skip the validation step again click next and uh, give it a name I pair V and uh, we'll call it one and two as I'm using nodes Dacre 001 and 002 click next it will be assigned a DHCP address dynamically for our access point to the cluster and then we go ahead click next and let it run so again I will pause and save a few minutes of your time the creation has been successful we now have a cluster called GM Hyper V12 made of two nodes 001 and 002 and using node and this majority is a uh, quorum model we have dynamically assigned addresses for the access point GM Hyper-V 1 and 2 and of course also for uh, the public interfaces of the two nodes. So we'll click finish and go ahead and check the result. Here's our cluster GM Hyper-V 1 and 2. It has at the moment no services. Two nodes, a couple of disks available, one used as a quorum disk and the other used as a normal available storage to the cluster. So the next step is uh, to create a cluster share volume so that we can use that particular um, volume then mounted and use it for the virtual machines. Before we do that I want to make sure that I'm not using the network that will carry iSCSI traffic for cluster traffic as well. So if you remember from the first part of the screencast that network was 192.168.3.0 so I'm going to look for it. It's network number 3. So I click on properties and won't allow cluster communication on this network. Again, that's in the interest of isolating the traffic, avoiding any possible timeouts and issues that could cause a cluster to fail. There we go. So in order to enable share volume, I right-click here and enable cluster share volumes. Please, please make sure to use them just for virtual machines. Cluster share volumes are not a cluster file system. Accept the disclaimer, click OK, and we have cluster share volumes enabled. Now we need to add one of the volumes to perform as a cluster share volume, and in our case it's volume Z. Uh, by the way, you don't actually need a letter. The letter is going to be discarded in the process of uh, mounting this as a cluster share volume because the mount point is going to become a directory under C. So we click OK. 